Next up are lipids. Uh, lipids are diverse organic molecules that are hydrophobic, meaning they repel water, right? Water fearing. Uh, this group includes fats, oils, phospholipids, and steroids. Um, despite their differences, all lipids share the common characteristic of being rich in energy due to their high carbon hydrogen bond content. Um, so a few major functions before we jump into it. So like I already mentioned, energy storage. So fats and oils serve as a concentrated and efficient way to store energy uh, for later use. Uh, when needed, the body breaks these down and can release the energy for various cellular processes. Um, cell membrane structure, very, very important. Um, phospholipids are the basic structure of cell membranes. We'll talk about it in a little more detail in a second. Um, the arrangement right, creates that, that separation of the inside from the outside of the cell. But we also see steroids, which are a type of lipid um, embedded in these membranes, and they can adjust the fluidity. Um, insulation and protection. Uh, lipids uh, act as insulators. They help to regulate body temperature. Uh, they also provide cushioning and protection to vital organs like your kidneys. Kidneys have a nice layer of um, fat surrounding it so that if they get jostled about, they, you know, they have that, that support, um, gives them a little extra protection. Um, and then finally, hormone regulation. Um, steroid hormones play a really, really crucial role in regulating growth, development, metabolism, reproductive processes. Um, I'm all uh, lipids in general play a really important role in in a lot of body processes. Uh, reproductive in particular, um, having n not enough uh, fat composition, this is true for, um, for all animals, um, will decrease your reproductive um, likelihood to be able to reproduce. So having too little and having, well, far too much, but uh, too much is better than not enough, actually, when it comes to reproductive processes, when we look at animals across species. Um, but yeah, having not enough uh, can greatly decrease um, reproductive ability uh, and can really mess with your metabolism. Having too, too little fat uh, and not getting enough of the steroids you need and enough of the various fatty acids that you need um, leads to your cells not functioning properly and can lead to um, downstream health impacts. Uh, if you decide to ever take a human anatomy and physiology class, it's a major topic in there. All right, so... I already mentioned a little bit, fats and oils um, are lipids that are commonly used for energy storage. They consist of a glycerol and a fatty acid, fatty acid chain. Um, in fats, fatty acids are saturated, meaning that they have no double bonds. They're saturated with hydrogen bonds. Um, and this makes them uh, a solid at room temperature, that lack of double bonds, they're solid. So think uh, butter or uh, uh, coconut oil, right? It's a solid at room temperature. Uh, now oils, on the other hand, um, they're going to have unsaturated fatty acids. I mean, there's one or more double bonds. These lead to them being uh, a liquid at room temperature. So olive oil, uh, grapeseed oil, uh, oh, there's tons of canola oil, sunflower oil, all of those. They're, they're liquids at room temperature. Um, this is something important to think about when you are cooking, actually. Uh, things that are a solid at human body temperature. What do you think those fats do <laughs> when you consume them, right? If they're a solid at human body temperature, 98.5, 98.6, um, that means that they're solid as they're going through you. <laughs> <laughs> not ideal, right? And of course, it's a little more complicated than just that. But um, but it's something to think about when we consider what kinds of fats we're consuming. Not that you have to restrict or eliminate entirely, though there are a few that are really not good to consume. Um, but it means being thoughtful, being thoughtful about uh, quantities and where the food's coming from. You know, is this, uh, oh, uh, margarine. Margarine's really, really bad. If, if you're a margarine consumer, please reconsider it. It's a uh, it's one of those, you know, solid at room temperature and uh, uh, involves uh, trans, which we'll, we'll get into trans fats here in a second. Um, so unsaturated fatty acids, so those are the ones that are liquids at room temperature, called oils. Um, unsaturated fats um, help improve blood cholesterol levels, right? So this is, this is your olive oils, your, 
your canola oils. These are these can be good. That's what we talked about. Like olive oil can be good. Avocado oil. Those those can be really good for you in you know in the right amounts. Um, whereas in saturated fats, they can contribute to plaques in your arteries. So that's that's your your butter. Not you know you can have some butter, but you know don't eat a stick of butter a day. That that's not good. Um, saturated fats tend to get packed tightly and like I said, solid at room temperature. Now trans fats. Um, they're created by hydrogenation. So this is a process that changes the, the orientation of, um, of the fats. So uh, these, they also increase your LDL, your low density lipoproteins. Oh, we're not gonna get real into it, but basically those are just, they're, they're small uh, fats bound to a protein. Uh, we call that the bad cholesterol. Um, and it's a ratio. You do have to have a certain amount of LDL, but you want your ratio of um, high density lipoproteins, HDL to LDL. You want more HDL than LDL in your in your bloodstream. Um, yeah, watching the trans fats and the saturated fats that are in your foods is is a worthwhile thing to consider, um, and sticking more towards those unsaturated fats. Okay. Now essential fatty acids. These are the really good ones. Um, they are required for your body to function properly, but our bodies cannot synthesize them, which means we have to get them through food, right? We have to get them through diet. Um, there are two known essential fatty acids for humans. There are other ones, but you know, for humans, uh, omega-3 fatty acid and omega-6 fatty acid. Uh, Omega-3s are found in salmon, trout, tuna, um, they're important for brain function, very important for the developing brain, um, for normal growth and development, and they may help prevent heart disease and certain cancers. It's really hard. Those studies, you know, you can't do these really nice controlled studies to look at something like that. Um, but something else that's important is your omega-3 to omega-6 ratios as well. And if you've had blood work done recently, um, you should consider like like pull up your report because it'll show these and you can look at the ratios really really interesting all right phospholipids phospholipids are really really important they are the um, foundation they're the structure the base structure of your cell membranes uh, they have a hydrophilic or water attracting head so you can see here I'll, let me grab the there we go so the head here and circle it that is the phospholipid head. And then these over here are the tails. So we've got our two tails. Um, the head is attracted to water, but the tails are, those are fatty acid chains, right? Those are very water fearing, hydrophobic. Um, and they arrange themselves into a lipid bilayer. They do that by, you can look at this little image here, right? The heads turn towards the external environment and the internal environment because they like water, right? Aqueous solutions. And then the tails, the two tails turn towards each other because they don't like water. So the heads keep the water away and then the tails uh, can interact with each other uh, to form that, that bilayer. Uh, that bilayer separates your cells from you know, the internal parts of your cell from the outside environment. And we also see these kind of bilayers around some of your organelles. All right, so steroids are our next um, category, steroids and waxes. Um, steroids are a diverse group of lipids. Uh, they include cholesterol and hormones like estrogen and testosterone. Cholesterol is a crucial component of cell membranes. It kind of gets a bad rap, like, oh, your cholesterol is too high, which, you know, which of course is a thing, but you do need cholesterol. It's very important for maintaining uh, how fluid the membrane is and how stable it is. Um, steroid hormones also regulate um, various physiological processes from growth to reproduction, right? Estrogen and testosterone. Um, steroids are uh, four carbon rings. So you can see you can see here in the picture, right? One, two, three, four. So that's steroids are gonna be made up of that four carbon ring structure. Um, and several of them, like cholesterol, have little tails. Um, that little tail is how cholesterol interacts with the phospholipid bilayer. The tail is hydrophobic and, and goes into the membrane. Um, so then as it's embedded in the, the bilayer, it's right, the, 
steroids, cholesterol, it, it, the whole thing is hydrophobic. So the tail interacts with the phospholipid tail and then the rest of the molecule can kind of be up below, below the, the polar head of the phospholipid and kind of embedded into those tails. Uh, and helps with uh, making it stiffer. Um, okay, so our last one for this is um, waxes. So waxes are made up of hydrocarbon chains with an alcohol group and a fatty acid. Uh, and this is gonna include beeswax, lanolin, uh, as well as like wax coating on plant leaves. Like if you've ever um, like touched leaves, like the, the upper part is kind of waxy, um, like water will bead up on it sort of thing. Okay, that wraps us up for lipids.